Well, you guys, does it really matter how you apply thermal paste? It seems some people get really triggered about how you're applying thermal paste onto your CPU. Whether you're using the P method, the rice grain method, the line method, the cross method, the cross method with dots, the spread method, or whatever other method they seem to think is the best way of doing it. All that really matters is that you completely cover the heat spreader and you put a fine smear of compound on there. Obviously, too little is not good enough and too much is going to be really messy. But there's real no difference between all methods of how you're applying it, in my personal opinion. So really, you just need to put a mount on, whether you're using this little rice grain method here and putting the cooler back on and tighten it down. So making sure that you cover that heat spreader, that is the most important part. Now, in all my testing over the years, I've never really seen a major difference between any of the applications the way you use it. Now, there's differences in compound that you use, but as you can see here, when you remove this, sometimes there's too little or there's too much, and this is the real big uh, trigger point for some people. So you can see here, I'm using this H HY510 thermal paste. Now, this is not about what thermal paste to use, this is how you're applying it and what really gets people going. Now, sometimes some thermal paste is a little bit more watery and a bit more difficult to apply. Sometimes you might need to spread it with a spreader. And sometimes some people like to uh, smear it or spread it across the CPU. I mean, there's no real bad way of doing it. This is a small amount of compound that I'm putting on this CPU here. And I expect it to have slightly higher temperatures because in my opinion, is probably not quite enough uh, compound on here. And if you look at the temperatures here, they're getting up into uh, the 85 Celsius section, which is the maximum Celsius here. If you look on the statistics on the right, there's a slight difference here. And you can see by looking at the camera here, there is not much left on the heat spreader here. And you can see a bit of darkening around the actual uh, cooler itself. And this is where it's got a little bit too hot and uh, the compound hasn't distributed across the heat spreader enough, in my personal opinion. So in this case, I would say this is probably not the best way of doing it. Is it going to harm your PC? Probably going to have a few degrees more temperature uh, than normal, but you have got some on there that will fill in the imperfections of the heat spreader itself, like little pits inside the metal. And the compound is just to fill those in and make sure that the two metals are not touching each other and just add a little barrier between the two. So I'm going to clean this off and I'm going to try another method and we'll see what the difference is in these temperatures. So let me go ahead and we'll put a line method in here. Not a perfect line. I'm pretty sure that's going to trigger someone about how that's not quite correct and there's a little bit too much towards the left or to the right or whatever it is that triggers them. But we're going to go ahead and we'll screw this down onto uh, the system here. Now this is not the best cooler but I tried to use something that was quick to release and quick to install so I could get this over and done with because I get sick and tired of seeing comments about how people are applying thermal paste or how I do it myself. So if we look here, we're getting 82 Celsius here and the other one was 85. So it's a couple of degrees difference. Now, bearing in mind, there's difference in ambient temperature and I only run this for, you know, like a couple of minutes or something along those lines. So really, uh, there's no real difference. So it's three degrees Celsius is the difference there. And that could be due to uh, ambient temperature. That could be due to anything. Uh, and this is the thing that people need to realize. So I'm going to remove the actual thing here. And you can see how it's gone to one side. Here's a little bit of a spread on the other side where there's not enough down that left-hand side. And this is pretty common when you're doing line methods. They can go either way. There's a little bit of a build up down the bottom there where there was a little bit too much. But on that left-hand side, you can see there's not much compound there now this is no scientific uh, method of testing compound and how you apply it this is just to show you that it's not that important probably three things that are really important is choose your compound make sure that you're not using too little and make sure the heat spreader is covered that is it that is pretty much it and people need to just get over it and move on and people just overcomplicate things because someone says that this compound is the best or this method of applying compound is the best doesn't make it so. And again, five dots is because I've seen somewhere online that five dots is the best method of application. And you can see here, we're getting 84 Celsius max. 
and I'm trying to keep it around about two minutes so we can see that's what we're getting here. So there's a slight marginal difference here. We've got 84, but nothing really to write home about. And this is what it's all about. People seem to don't do any testing. They create an account on YouTube that has no uh, YouTube followers, has no videos, has no nothing, and they're experts in everything. And they go around on YouTube and they go and create comments in the comment section of loads of different videos thinking they know all the answers because they spend most of their day on YouTube watching YouTube videos and criticizing or critiquing other people's methods and techniques. They don't want to go around doing it themselves. That would take too much time, but they'd rather go around and critique everyone else's. But as you can see here, this one's a little bit more messier. The spread is a little bit more across the, the actual heat spreader here. But, and that was the five dots. And really, it's just going to come down to whatever method you like to use. Now, whether you're one of these people that like to spread it and then tap it because it's viscous, all this nonsense, you don't need to worry about doing anything like that. You can see there's way too much compound on here. It's a massive big blob of it. I wouldn't advise you using that much compound. Just whack a bit more on there just for good measure. And I'm pretty sure that we'll probably have a slight rise in temperature and a load of mess on the motherboard afterwards, which I'm going to have to clean. So that is the problem when you put too much, but it's not going to harm your computer. It's not going to break it. It's just going to be a lot of mess. And that's all there is to it. Oh my God, does this guy know what he's doing? He's just dropped the cooler right onto the motherboard. You know, and then this is how people are. They seem to watch videos just to see one little tiny mistake so they can critique it. And really, does it really matter? And there we go. We've got 86 degrees Celsius. And yes, there's maybe a degree or two that's a slightly bit higher. But what they're not taking into account is this is now a, a number of tests that I've been running this on. And there's been no break or rest to let the motherboard or CPU cool down. So things are getting a little bit toasty there. But again, if I just did this on a very cold machine, you'll probably find there's not going to be much difference. It probably won't be as high. But of course, when I remove the actual cooler itself, there's going to be a bit of a mess just like this. And again, I'm going to have to then wipe all of this up. And this stuff is pretty sticky stuff. But I would say this comes under the category of being too much compound and it may reflect slightly in temperatures. And again, it's it just depends on the ambient temperature and what you've been doing with the computer as well. If they all had equal cold starts and we left them for an hour to cool down and then done it again that will be a true test as well but i haven't got that amount of time to spend on something that's so stupid so now i'm going to put this amount of compound on here and we're going to smear this across the heat spreader so we can uh, basically get a nice even coat of it now again depending on how much you're using here i can control this with the glove and basically remove any surplus and there needs to be probably a little bit more here. So I'm going to spread this out here as best I can just to cover and make sure that we've got a good coverage. And there's not that much. It's just enough to cover and fill in any imperfections on the heat spreader. That's all that's doing. And there's a little bit down the bottom there, which I need to touch up. There we go. And that probably still won't be good enough for someone uh, in the comment section because they just love to uh, critique that sort of stuff. But hey, we're going to just put the cooler down and tighten this down and we'll give this one a test. Now, the whole purpose of this is not to prove a point or anything like that. It's just to show people that none of this really matters too much. If you're educating people in the correct way by saying, just make sure you're covering the heat spreader exactly how I do on my builds. And sometimes I'll put a P method in there on the Intel processors, depending on what type of CPU you're using and how big the heat spreader is will determine how much compound you're going to need. And again, you can see here, 83 Celsius, not much difference really from the big massive blob of uh, compound that we had on there and all the other types of compound uh, methods we've done. So there's not major differences between any of them. They're just marginal uh, differences. And that's all within margin of error. So what have you learned from this video? Well, you've learned from this video not to get caught up in pointless debates online about how to apply thermal paste. So what have we learned from this video? Well, we've learned that not to get involved in pointless debates online about how you're applying thermal compound and don't rise to the occasion. Basically, all you need to understand is choose the thermal compound of your choice, 
apply it and cover the heat spreader. We know that that's the best thing to do. How you do that is entirely up to you. Whether you use the P method, the rice grain method, the line method, the cross, the cross with the dots or the spread or whatever method you want to use. There's no real major significant difference between any of them. What I will say is don't use too little and don't use too much because it's messy. Too little might be a little bit bad because you're not covering the heat spreader. Too much will be too messy, as we already know. And that's it. Anyway, that is going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. A special shout out for Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, PC Repair Tech, Albert Houston, Mar Sierra, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, Phil's Computer Repair and Welsh Tony One. I shall catch you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye for now.